Between 1629 and 1640, King Charles I ruled without Parliament, a period known as personal rule. For supporters of the King, this was a period of peace in which Charles managed an efficient reforming government. For his critics, this was an 11-year tyranny. Why did Charles dismiss Parliament in 1629? Charles had come to the throne in 1625, describing himself as a Prince of Parliaments, but his relationship with the people's representatives had deteriorated rapidly. The King had wanted England to strike an aggressive foreign policy, but Parliament, concerned about the cost and looking to assert itself, granted Charles only a fraction of what he wanted and repeatedly sought the removal of his favourite, the Duke of Buckingham. When Charles made concessions, more were demanded. When he refused, parliamentary business ground to a halt. When in 1629, the King's critics in Parliament condemned his religious and financial policies, suggested that the ministers behind them had committed treason, and sought to restrict what money the King could raise, Charles dismissed Parliament. Was ruling without a Parliament unusual? No. All government flowed from the person and authority of the King. While Parliament had several important functions, such as passing laws and raising taxes, it had no direct role in the governing of the country. If the King didn't want to pass a law or raise a tax, he could claim he had no need of Parliament. Nor was Charles unique in trying to avoid the political storms Parliament could whip up. Elizabeth summoned Parliament as little as possible, once every three and a half years on average. And aside from a brief period between April and June 1614, James had his own period of personal rule between 1610 and 1621. Nor did personal rule mean the king governed as a solitary, isolated figure. Charles made greater use of and expanded his Privy Council, even including former parliamentary critics. As Mark Kishlansky writes, it was a group of diverse opinions and outlooks, chiefly composed of astute politicians with a finger in the wind. The king therefore heard and considered advice from various sources and perspectives. What then was the problem with personal rule? During the 1620s, the frequent meetings of Parliament had allowed Charles' subjects the opportunity to let the King know exactly what they felt about his policies. This was both an important political safety valve, allowing the discontented to let off steam, and an important indicator of the wider political opinion. During the 1630s, that safety valve was shut, that line of communication cut. Charles and his ministers therefore became increasingly out of touch. This became problematic when the king's policies were perceived as threatening both popular liberties and parliamentary privileges. 